Dobrý deň, vážení účastníci. Som rád, že sa opäť takto spájame a dovolte mi privítať vás na dnešnom teritoriálne ladenom webinári, ktoré sa v tomto covidovom období stalo už pre agentúru Sáriel takou integrálnou súčasťou. našich snách pomáhať exportérom priblížiť špecifika spojené s podnikateľským prostredím zahraničných trhov. No a dnes by sme vám radi priblížili práve špecifika trhu, ktoré prináša prostredie významnej škandinávskej krajiny a to teda Norska. A pri príprave týchto webinárov už tradične spolupracujeme s našimi zastupiteľskými úradmi a aj na dnešnom online evente sa veľkou mierou podelal zastupiteľský úrad Slovenskej republike v Osle, za čo by som im veľmi pekne chcel poďakovať. A takisto sa dnes podelajú na tomto evente aj miestni partnery ako Innovation Norway a obchodné komory v mestách Oslo a Bergen, za čo tiež veľmi pekne ďakujem. A ako vieme, tak Norsko nie je členom členským štátom Európskej únie, ale je dôležitým partnerom, ktorý si uplatňuje pravidla jednotného trhu únie v kontexte tzv. Európskeho hospodárskeho priestoru. No a práve preto existuje veľká miera kompatibility pre obchodovanie, ako aj priestor pre zintenzívňovanie vzájomnej hospodárskej spolupráce. Verím, že dnešný webinár a rovnako aj individuálne B2G konzultácie s pani ekonomickou diplomatkou Dubas a pánom honorárnym konzulom Hálandom vám teritorium Norska priblíži z takého praktického úhla pohľadu a podporí tie vaše exportné aktivity práve do tohto teritoria. Teraz mi dovolte odozdať slovo pani veľvyslankyni Frelichovej, ktorej ďakujem za kontinuálnu a hlavne aktívnu spoluprácu. Príjemné vzdelávanie. Počujeme sa? Áno, Dobrý deň. Good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, I also want to welcome our, our Norwegian uh, guests and uh, make a quick apology that for a short time I will make some introductory remarks in uh, Slovak uh, and then I will revert to English. Takže ďakujem, pán riaditeľ, ďakujem veľmi pekne za slovo a ďakujem aj za milé slova, ktoré ste, ktoré ste adresovali, veľmi sa sú veľmi nás to teší. A chcem všetkých pozdraviť v tomto virtuálnom priestore a privítať vám, vás v slnečnom osle, uh, aj keď samozrejme boli by sme všetci najradšej, keby to bolo, keby to bolo možné, možné osobne, ale už máme všetci tak výbornú prax v zužitkovaní potenciálu online priestoru, že myslím, že, že bude to užitočné aj touto formou. A v prvom rade chcem v mene celého nášho týmu poďakovať partnerskému týmu Sario za skutočne konštruktívnu a efektívnu spoluprácu, ktorú sme sa za posledné, ktorú sme si vybudovali za posledné roky a tiež chcem oceniť profesionalitu a osobnú zanietenosť pani Aleksandry Dubas, našej ekonomickej diplomatky, ktorá naozaj s vysokým nasadením neunávne pracuje v prospech posilnenia slovensko-norských obchodných vzťahov. Lebo preniknúť úspešne na náročný norský trh nie je jednoduché, Avšak slovenská ekonomická diplomácia je, myslím si, veľmi dobre pripravená otvárať dvere a asistovať našim spoločnostiam, presadiť sa na zahraničných trhoch. A myslím si, že s profesionálmi, ako je pani Dubas a partnerský tým Sario, robíme naozaj dôležité pokroky. A verím, že tento trend sa bude vyvíjať aj naďalej pozitívnym smerom. A tento webinár dnes nám umožní odovzdať slovenským spoločnostiam cenné informácie z ekonomického a podnikateľského prostredia v Norsku. A tiež verím, že vám pomôže v snahách etablovať sa na, na norskom trhu. Tiež by som chcela vyzvihnúť a oceniť finančný mechanizmus EHP a Norska, o ktorom bude neskôr reč, ktorý je nesmierne užitočným a rokmi overeným nástrojom v rôznych oblastiach, ale aj na posilnení spolupráce medzi firmami, a v súčasnosti je to primárne v oblasti zeleného biznisu. Takže som rada, že naše pozvanie prijali Magna Rodelien, programový riaditeľ grantov EAPA Norska z Innovation Norway, s ktorým máme naozaj výbornú spoluprácu a ktorý vás prevedie tým procesom možností, ako využívať tieto fondy. Takisto našim ďalším dvom zácným norským hostom pani Astri Plato z obchodnej komory a Johannes Magnus Bergenskej obchodnej komory. 
A zároveň som tiež rada, že mám možnosť predstaviť vám nášho e, relatívne nového honorárneho konzula so sídlom v Bergene na, e, za, a vlastne pokrýva aj celé západné Norsko, ktorý e, pôsobí vo svojej funkcii od minulého roka a veľmi úspešne. Je to norský biznismen, Slovensko mu naozaj úprimne prirástlo k srdcu, má ho rád, často tam cestoval pred, pred pandémiou. A naozaj má eminentný záujem pomáhať a poskytovať slovenským firmám asistenciu pri, pri vstupe na norský trh. Spolupracoval už s viacerými slovenskými firmami a tiež bol našim kľúčovým partnerom pri príprave, pri príprave biznis programu počas štátnej návštevy prezidenta Kisku v Bergene v júni 2018. A aj touto cestou teda chcem poďakovať za cené rády a pomoc, ktorú nám, ktorú nám dlhodobo poskytuje. A kým prenechám priestor na vašu odbornú debatu, dovolte mi ešte pár slov pre, pre našich norských partnerov. So, once again, please let me welcome our Norwegian speakers. Magna Rodelian of Innovation Norway, Astri Plato of Oslo Chamber of Commerce and um, Johannes Magnus of Bergen Chamber of Commerce. And um, I want to thank you for accepting our invitation to this seminar and for sharing uh, with the Slovak companies the important insights into ways of doing business in Norway, uh, because I'm really happy to see the growing trend that the Slovak companies are increasingly interested and uh, eager to cooperate with Norway and enter the Norwegian market, uh, which is something we want to support, encourage and uh, assist. So uh, thank you all and, uh, and I wish you all a fruitful and uh, successful event, which I hope will not be a one-time event, but just a starting point where the discussions will will then continue um, in the years to come. Um, but before I, I go, now let me pass the floor to Torbjorn Haaland, uh, our honorary consul uh, of Slovakia in uh, Bergen. You have the floor, Torbjorn. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, honored to to represent Slovakia and Norway and have an excellent cooperation and coexistence with the embassy in Oslo. I'm pleased to be one of your contacts to Norway and be your channel to other companies in my country. Um, I'm a Norwegian and live in Bergen at the western coast at one of the most important cities beside the capital of Oslo. As honorary consul, combined with my experience in Norwegian and international business, I'm in capacity to advise how to connect to each other and can also give advice about how it works to do business in Norway, legally, environmentally, and of course, take into account the culture in Norway. Nearly all business people are fluent in English, as this is the second language at school, also because most of trade and production are done with international companies. I'm at your service, business to business, if you have any queries, do not hesitate to contact me, and some of you are already scheduled for meetings after the webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Torbjorn. A ďakujem samozrejme aj všetkým ostatným speakerom za otvorenie tohto webinára. Teraz sa môžeme presunúť možno už k tej praktickejšej časti, aby som rád vyzval pani ekonomickú diplomatku Aleksandru Dubas, aby nám urobila ten prvotný štart do predstavenia Norska a jeho podnikateľského prostredia. O, takže vám odozdávam slovo a ďakujem. Ďakujem veľmi pekne za slovo. Ako už bolo povedané, moje meno je Alexandra Dubás a pôsobím na slovenskom veľvyslanstve v Norsku ako ekonomická diplomatka. Takže ak máte nejaké otázky k obchodovaniu v Norsku, ja som práve ten človek, ktorého môžete osloviť. Začnem teda uh, s prezentáciou. Norsko je známe dých berúcimi prírodnými atrakciami ako fjordy, polárna žiara alebo v momentálnom období polnočné slnko. Napriek tomu, že je počtom obyvateľov Norsko malý národ a vďaka svojmu veľkému územiu po Islande má najnižšiu hustotu obyvateľstva v Európe, ide o vysoko rozvinutú a modernú krajinu s veľmi silnou a otvorenou ekonomikou, so živým súkromným sektorom, veľkým štátnym sektorom, rozsiahlým systémom sociálneho zabezpečenia, politickou stabilitou 
a pozíciou medzi najlepšími krajinami vo väčšine medzinárodných rebríčkov transparentnosti, rovnosti a aj kvality života. Môže sa totiž pochváliť jedným z najvyšších HDP na obyvateľa na svete. Norsko nie je členom Európskej únie, avšak ako člen Európskeho hospodárskeho priestoru sa prostredníctvom dohody o EHP podiela na jednotnom trhu Európskej únie a plne sa zúčastňuje všetkých výskumných programov a činností Európskej únie. Dohoda o EHP však nezahrňa oblasť polnohospodárstva a rybarstva, hoci obsahuje niektoré ustanovenia o obchode s polnohospodárskymi rybými výrobkami, tiež nezahrňa celnú úniu, spoločnú obchodnú politiku, spoločnú zahraničnú a bezpečnostnú politiku, priame a nepriame dane, hospodárskú a menovú úniu a ani spravodlivosť a vnútorné veci. Norsko je však súčasťou šengenského priestoru, vďaka čomu za bežnej situácie mimo pandémie od, e, sú odstranené hraničné kontroly medzi signatárskymi krajinami. E, krajina má bohaté prírodné zdroje, ako sú ropa a zemný plyn, ryby, lesy, minerály, vďaka čomu je popredným svetovým producentom a vývozcom ropy, plynu a morských plodov. V očakávaní možného poklesu celosvetovej produkcie ropy príjmy z aktivít ropného sektoru zhromažďuje v najväčšom investičnom fonde na svete, ktorý sa častokrát označuje aj tzv. ropný fond. Prostredníctvom týchto príjmov z ropného odvetvia vláda vytvára vyrovnaný štátny rozpočet. Najväčším zdrojom príjmu, teda do štátneho rozpočtu, predstavuje ťažba a vývoz ropy a zemného plynu, ktorú takmer všetku exportuje. Vďaka svojim veľkým vodným zdrojom energeticky náročné odvetvia pokrýva Norsko výrobou ekologicky čistej elektriny. Až z 90, z 90 prostredníctvom vodných elektrární a zvyšok prostredníctvom veterných, solárnych a tepelných elektrární. Norsko patrí k najväčším spotrebiteľom elektrickej energie na obyvateľa a v roku 2020 bolo zároveň najväčším vývozcom čistej elektriny v Európe. K vysokej norskej spotrebe elektrickej energie významne prispieva aj elektromobilita. 54 všetkých predaných nových automobilov v roku 2020 boli práve elektromobily. Norský dopravný sektor je jedným z najelektrifikovanejších na svete. Norsko má tak prístup k čoraz väčšiemu množstvu použitých batérií, čo poskytuje jedinečné príležitosti pre vývoj a testovanie nových technologických riešení pre opätovné použitie a recykláciu batérií za účelom exportovať ich na väčšie trhy. Preto má Norsko ambície prevzať vedenie v oblasti udržateľných batérií. Norský námorný priemysel je svetovým lídrom vo vývoji e, riešení s nízkymi a nulovými emisiami v oblasti námorníctva. Elektrina je najdôležitejším nákladovým faktorom pri výrobe obnoviteľného vodíka. Rýchlo sa rozvíjajúci vodíkový priemysel môže tak stavať na najsilnejšej výhode Norska, ktorou je existujúca kapacita obnoviteľnej energie. Napríklad najväčší norský veľký obchod s potravinami Asko uviedol na trh svoju prvú flotilu vodíkových nákladných vozidiel už v minulom roku a v marci tohto roku Nóri predstavili prvý trajekt na vodíkový pohon na svete. Plánom je aj rozšíriť sie čerpacích vodíkových stanic. Vláda plánuje v rokoch 2022-2033 investície do dopravy v hodnote 118 miliard eur. Z toho 50 miliard eur je určených na rozvoj cestnej siete a 39 miliard eur na rozvoj železničnej. Plán je hodnotený ako ambiciózny a realistický, no zároveň je tačom kritiky jeho environmentálny profil a vplyv na podnebie. Uh, Norsko je bohatá spoločnosť s vysokou úrovňou príjmov a komplexnými verejnými sociálnymi výhodami a solidnými verejnými financiami. Východiskový bod má, má teda dobrý. No norská ekonomika môže v najbližších desaťročiach pravdepodobne čeliť výzvam. Predloženie strednej dĺžky života bude ohrozovať najmä udržateľnosť verejných financií krajiny s komplexnými a zdane financovanými verejnými sociálnymi dávkami. Aj keď návratnosť ropného fondu významne prispieva k verejným výdavkom, fond nie je ani zďaleka taký veľký, aby dokázal prekonať výzvy, ktoré predstavuje starnutie populácie. Norsko je citlivé na nižšie ceny svojho vyváženého tovaru a musí zaistiť, aby ekonomika bola pružná a pripravená čeliť neočakávaným vonkajším šokom. Preto sa snažia o reštrukturalizáciu ekonomiky, uvedomujú si, že svetový dopyt po rope bude klesať a investujú do nových zelených odvetví na znižovanie emisí v ekologicky náročných odvetviach, ktorých využijú doterajšie znalosti a kapacity. 
Najmä pokiaľ ide o výstavbu veterných elektrární na mori, technológiu zachytávania emisí a následného transportu uhlíka pod morské dno, alebo už spomínaný green shipping a obnoviteľné batérie. Šírenie vírusu a následné opatrenia poznačili samozrejme hospodársky vývoj aj v Norsku. Prvý lockdown v marci 2020 viedol k poklesu pevninskému HDP v období od februára až apríla približne o 11 Nezamestnanosť sa zvyšla na najvyššiu úroveň od druhej svetovej vojny. Norská koruna bola zároveň na historickom minime v dôsledku radikálneho poklesu cien ropy v rovnakom období ako vznik pandémie. Avšak aktivita smerom k minulému letu výrazne vzrástla, najmä v dôsledku dobrej epidemiologickej situácie v krajine. Oživenie ekonomiky pokračovalo až do jesene, kedy Norsko bolo nutené v novembri zaviesť prísnejšie opatrenia na zastavenie šírenia koronavírusu. Opatrenia sa výrazne zintenzívnili od januára 2021 v dôsledku zhoršujúcej sa situácie. Norsko, ako aj veľa krajín, prijalo najrozsiahlejšie ekonomické podporné opatrenia vôbec a výrazne podporovalo a podporuje systém, aby jednotlivcom zabezpečilo stratený príjem a spoločnosťom potrebnú likviditu na prekonanie krízy. V týchto dňoch dochádza k uvoľňovaniu opatrení vo vnútri krajiny, no vstup do krajiny je v podstate odoprený cudzincom bez, pod, bez pobytu v Norsku. Norsko počas celého obdobia pandémie má veľmi prísny hraničný režim pre vstup cudzincov. Navyše nóri veľmi zodpovedne dodržiavajú odporúčania vyhýbať sa osobným pracovným stretnutiam a zotrvávať na home office v maximálnej možnej miere. Preto aj napriek uvoľňovaniu opatrení je ešte stále obťažné plánovať v najbližšej dobe vycestovať do Norska za účelom absolvovať osobné pracovné stretnutia. Takže veľmi výrazný pokles a následné oživenie norskej ekonomiky boli teda celkovo v roku 2020 rýchlejšie ako vo väčšine ostatných európskych štátov a pokles HDP krajiny v roku 2020 o minus 0,8 bol v konečnom dôsledku pozitívnejší ako pôvodné odhady. Silnou stránkou Norska oproti ostatným krajinám sveta je ale spomenaný ropný fond, na ktorý vláda aj vo veľkej miere teraz spolieha. V dôsledku pandémie je vláda nutená čerpať viac, ako povoluje fiskálne pravidlo 3 preto je terčom kritiky mladých ľudí o neúmernom čerpaní prostriedkov. Podstata ropného fondu tkvie totiž v udržaní a zhodnocovaní prostriedkov vo fonde pre ďalšie generácie. V očakávaní možného poklesu produkcie ropy a zemného plynu Norsko šetri štátne príjmy z aktivit ropného sektoru. Spomedzi európskych krajín najvýznamnejšími obchodnými partnermi Norska v dovoze sú Švedsko, Nemecko, Dánsko a Veľká Británia, z čoho je vidieť dominantné postavenie škandinávskych krajín. Mimo krajín Európy na importe sa hlavne podiela dovoz z Číny a USA. Z hľadiska vývozu najvýznamnejšími obchodnými partnermi Norska je Veľká Británia, Nemecko, Holandsko, Švedsko a Dánsko. Ďalšími významnými obchodnými partnermi mimo Európy sú USA, Čína, Kanada a Japonsko. Z krajín V4 má lepšie východiskové postavenie v obchodných vzťahoch Polsko. K najvýznamnejším položkám dovozu do Norska v roku 2020 patrili motorové vozidla, telekomunikačné zariadenia, lode, ropné oloje a niklové rudy a koncentráty a nábytok. V roku 2020 boli najvýznamnejšími položkami vývozu surová ropa, zemný plyn, ryby, ropné oleje a hliník. Ako už bolo povedané, Norsko je veľká krajina s mnohými prírodnými zdrojmi. Z tohto dôvodu je v závislosti na hlavných odvetviach podnikania krajina z veľkej časti rozdelená do regionálnych zoskupení. Zatiaľ, čo Oslo je najväčšie mesto a hlavné obchodné centrum Norska, Stavanger hlavné mesto ropy a Bergen veľkým úzlom námornej dopravy a turizmu, Trondheim by sa dal nazvať vedeckým, technologickým a inovačným mestom Norska. Je domovom najväčšej škandinávskej nezávislej výskumnej organizácie SINTEF, ktorá je veľkým akcelerátorom inovácií nielen v Trondheime, ale v celom Norsku. Brána do najsevernejších oblastí krajiny je zase mesto Tromzo, v ktorom je sídlo najsevernejšej univerzity na svete, Norského polárneho inštitútu a ďalších významných centier výskumu a vzdelávania. Slovensko nepatrí medzi kľúčových obchodných partnerov Norska a ob, objem vzájomného obchodu je nízky. Máme s Norskom vysoko pozitívnu bilanciu. Nosnými exportnými komoditami sú automobily a elektronika. Tradične na dobrej úrovni je aj export strojov a mechanických nástrojov, kaučuk a export predmetov z ocel. 
Vyvážajú sa takisto plasty a výrobky z nich a rôzne priemyselné výrobky. Najdôležitejšou dovoznou komoditou z Norska je ferozliatina, ktorá sa dováža na výrobu železa a ocele. Takisto sa vo väčšom množstve dováža celulóza z dreva a papier, hliník a ryby. Významná bilaterálna spolupráca medzi Norskom a Slovenskom prebieha prostredníctvom spoločných projektov vďaka grantom EHP a Norska. Podrobnejšie a najmä aktuálne informácie k programom a jednotlivým výzvam na predkladanie projektov vám približí pán Magdar Odelien, programový riaditeľ grantov EHP Norske z agentúry Innovation Norway, ktorá má na norskej strane túto agentu. Ja by som chcela zdôrazniť, že na slovenskej strane je agenda grantov EHP a Norska v posobnosti Ministerstva investícií regionálneho rozvoja a informatizácie SR, konkrétne odboru grantov EHP a Norska. Pri hľadaní norských partnerov na predkladanie spoločných projektov je vhodné osloviť buď správcu konkrétneho programu, čo je v prípade biznesového programu, o ktorom bude hovoriť aj pán Magnar, výskumná agentúra, alebo implementačnú jednotku odbor grantov EHP Norska, ktorý disponujú databázou norských kontaktov, ktorí majú záujem participovať na spoločných projektoch v rámci grantov EHP a Norska. Všetky potrebné informácie a aktuálne výzvy nájdete na tejto oficiálnej webovej stránke. Na vyhľadávanie informácií o tendroch slúži Norská národná databáza DOFIN. Väčšina oznamení je uverejnená v norskom jazyku a špecifický výberový systém existuje len pre ropný sektor a vojenský materiál. Pracovanie ponuky predkladané v tendri môže byť finančne náročné. V priebehu roka sa v krajine koná veľa výstav. Najväčšie sa zameriavajú hlavne na cestovný ruch, elektrotechnický a energetický priemysel, lodný priemysel a vzdelávanie. Najväčšie množstvo výstav sa koná v Lillestrome pri Osle. Kalendár tohto najväčšieho výstaviska nájdete na webovej stránke Norgesvárameset. Ja by som chcela spomenúť niektoré ako potravinársky smak, ktorý sa koná raz za 2-3 roky a je to najväčšia arena pre potravinárske odvetvie. Alebo budúci rok sa uskutočne elektrotechnický Eliaden a tiež priemyselný veľtrh Smart Industry. Tiež sa konajú rôzne podujate s dôrazom na inovácie, IT a technológie, ako napríklad každoročný Oslo Innovation Week, ktorý by som chcela dať špeciálne do pozornosti. Najdôležitejší týždeň v roku v oblasti inovácií. Počas inovačného týždňa sa koná v Oslo približne 60 podujatí, viaceré odborné konferencie, workshopy, stretnutia, diskusie, matchmakingové podujatia, súťaže, pitchingové a networkingové akcie. Minulý rok sa to samozrejme prvýkrát konalo online a tento rok to vyzerá, že organizátori sa rozhodli tiež pre online verziu. Program sa momentálne kreuje, Niektoré podujatia sú spoplatnené, ale niektoré sú bez poplatku. Je to vhodná príležitosť navnímať oslovský inovačný ekosystém a spoznať dôležité inštitúcie, najdôležitejších hráčov na trhu a potenciálnych partnerov počas jedného týždňa. Minulý rok sme spoločne so Sario plánovali podnikateľskú misiu, ktorá sa žiaľ zrušila. Tento rok to pravdepodobne tiež nebude možné, keďže bude opäť inovačný týždeň digitálny a povolený Vstup do Norska pre cudzincov bez pobytu je zatiaľ v nedohľade. No pevne verím, že budúci rok sa nám podarí misiu uskutočniť a slovenské firmy sa budú môcť zúčastniť eventov počas tohto inovačného týždňa. Dávam to na teraz do pozornosti na využitie tento rok online. Tematické matchmakingové podujatia pre spoločnosti z príjmateľských krajín grantov EHP a Norska za účelom najsi partnera na predloženie projektu v rámci jednotlivých programov organizuje Innovation Norway v súľade s pripravovanými výzvami na predkladanie žiadostí o granty. Ale o tom vám povie viac pán Magnar Odelien. Takýto matchmaking organizujú z pravidla aj počas predchoho spomenutého inovačného týždňa v Osle. Spolupráce s komorami je vhodná najmä pri prvom kontakte s krajinou. Treba mať na zreteli, že ich služby bývajú spoplatnené za nemalý poplatok. Komory organizujú rôzne eventy, v dnešnej dobe webináre, tiež s užitočnými informáciami a takmer každé mesto má svoju vlastnú komoru. No a dnes tu máme zastupcov z Oslovskej a Bergenskej komory, čomu sa veľmi tešíme. V tomto slajde môžete vidieť webové stránky niektorých dôležitých inštitúcií a ja sa zatiaľ tematicky presuniem k téme obchodných zvyklostí. Norská obchodná kultúra je do istej miery založená na všeobecných norských hodnotách. Niektoré z hlavných pracovných hodnot sú rovnosť, dôvera a ploché štruktúry. Prečo je tomu tak? 
Nori uh, totiž veria, že rovnosť a dôvera sú základom kompetentných, zodpovedných a produktívnych pracovisk. Výsledkom toho je, že väčšina firiem sa zameriava na nehierarchickú štruktúru. Od manažerov na pracovisku sa očakáva, že budú pôsobiť viac ako tréneri a sprostredkovateľia ako autoritárske osobnosti. Dôležité rozhodnutia pre firmu sa často príjmajú skupinovo v týme. Rovnosť medzi pohľaviami sa vyžaduje a ocenuje vo všetkých aspektoch spoločnosti vrátane obchodného života. Je potrebné mať na pamäti, že tituly nie sú v Norsku na rozdiel od mnohých iných krajín veľmi dôležité. Používanie titulov možno, možno uh, v niektorých situáciách považovať za staromodné a ako prejav moci v spoločnosti, ktorá si zakladá na rovnosti. Kladú dôraz na kvalitu, na ekologické parametre a v neposlednom rade na cenu výrobkov. Pre norských obchodníkov je známe, že slovenské firmy majú nižšie náklady na pracovnú silu, ako aj celkové výrobné náklady v porovnaní s niektorými krajinami Európy. Preto nie je vhodné vôbec začínať rokovania s neprimeranými cenami. Norskí obchodníci sú vo všeobecnosti dosť konzervatívni a opatrení. Nadvezovanie kontaktov trvá dlhšie, ale v prípade získania dôvery sú to spolahliví obchodní partneri s dobrou platobnou disciplínou. Ak pôsobíte dôveryhodne a spolahlivo po všetkých stránkach, je to veľká výhoda pri oslovovaní norských firiem. Obchodné rokovanie je potrebné pripravovať čo najväčším časovým predstihom. Obchodný štýl je pomerne neformálny, stretnutia by však mali byť pripravené veľmi dobre, pretože to naznačuje, že to so svojím programom myslíte vážne. Programy by, e, stretnutia by sa mali posúvať vopred, aby sa obchodní partneri v Norsku mohli pripraviť na stretnutie. Je úplne bežné oslovovanie krstným menom aj v písomnom styku. Norskí obchodníci majú vytvorený okruh obchodných partnerov, s ktorými dlhodobo obchodujú. Efektívny spôsob preniknutia na norský trh je prostredníctvom obchodných zástupcov, respektíve agentov. Je potrebné získať osoby s dobrými znalostiami norského trhu a skladným vzťahom k Slovensku. Vývoz do Norska je väčšinou realizovaný prostredníctvom obchodných zástupcov, ktorí v mnohých prípadoch majú exkluzivitu. V Norsku ústna dohoda platí a treba dbať na to, aby sa exkluzivita pre partnera neprislúbila ústne pred konečným rozhodnutím. Ústne dohody a písomné zmluvy sú podľa norských právnych predpisov záväzné. Dohody možno niekedy uzavrieť rýchlo, stačí krátky e-mail alebo dokonca iba podanie ruky, pretože aspekt dôvery je tak zreteľný. Ak bude existovať nevyhnutná dôvera, norský podnikateľ vám podá ruku s dôverou, že strany následne vypracujú ďalšie papierovanie. Nóri všeobecne neočakávajú veľa vyjednávania. Pri rokovaniach sa očakáva, že uvedíte pevnú, realistickú a konkurencieschopnú počiatočnú cenu. Agresívne vyjednávania na tlak pravdepodobne vás nikam neposunie a môže vytvoriť odpor. U Nóra navyše nie znamená skutočne nie. Obchodní partnery vyžadujú, aby zahraniční obchodní partnery dodržiavali norské zákony a nariadenia v dôsledku možných vysokých postihov a sankcií za ich nedodržiavanie. Väčšina norov hovorí veľmi dobre anglicky a obchodné ponuky a prezentácie sa predkladajú v norskom alebo v anglickom jazyku a v kvalitnom spracovaní. Preferujú zahraničných obchodných partnerov s dobrou znalosťou angličtiny. Je vhodné sa vyhnúť drahým darčekom pre obchodného partnera, pretože by to mohlo byť vnímané ako úplatok. Poskytovanie darčekov nie je súčasťou norskej obchodnej kultúry s výnimkou malého vianočného darčeka alebo položky s logom. Dochvilnosť sa cení, pretože naznačuje dôveryhodnosť. Ak prijete neskoro bez oznámenia, mohlo by to stretnutie viesť nesprávnym smerom a narušiť vzťah. Kancelárske prostredie je zvyčajne neformálne, s obchodným neformálnym oblečením a uprednostňovaním pohodlného oblečenia a obuvy. Firmy v najväčších mestách bežne však uplatňujú aj konzervatívnejší dress code. Pri plánovaní obchodných ciest do Norska treba počítať s vysokými režijnými nákladmi a mať vopred potvrdené stretnutia pred vycestovaním. No a na záver jedna úsmevná praktická vec. Norské webové stránky obsahujú z pravidla mnoho viac informácií v norčine ako v angličtine. Preto odporúčam prostredníctvom internetového prekladača sa snažiť čítať informácie v norčine. Je to o mnoho efektívnejšie. No, takže dúfam, že moja prezentácia bola pre vás užitočná a v prípade, že máte záujem o telefonickú alebo online konzultáciu, kľudne ma neváhajte kontaktovať. Kontakt som, kontakt som uviedla, dúfam, že vidíte tento slajd, všeobecný ambasádny e-mail, keď použijete, určite sa to ku mne dostane. 
Takže ďakujem veľmi pekne za pozornosť a želám vám ešte príjemný webinár. Ďakujem veľmi pekne, Aleksandra. Dovolil som si požiť teda krstné meno, keďže v tej norskej biznis kultúre je to teda zrejme bežné. A ak dovolíte, tak sa presunieme možno už teda k prvému speakerovi priamo z Norska, budením Magnar Odelien, ktorý je programovým riaditeľom norských fondov v Innovation Norway agentúre. Preto pre mňa aj do anglického jazyka. Pani Dubas, poprosím, aby ste zrušili ju vzdielanie prezentácie, aby potom pán Magnar mohol vzdielať tú svoju. And now I would like to welcome and thank, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Magnar, and uh, also to ask you to share the presentation with us. Thank you. Thank you very much and good morning to, to all of you. I'll try to share my uh, presentation. Well, we can see it now. Hopefully you can see it and hopefully soon as well in full screen. Yeah, it's working. It's working. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is then Magnar Ørlén. Uh, I'm the program director for EEA Norway Grants in Innovation Norway. Uh, I'll come, we'll come back to uh, later in my presentation what we do under EEA Norway Grants also in uh, Slovakia. But I will, uh, before that, uh, uh, briefly address then the, the main challenge, challenges and opportunities uh, for, for Norway, uh, because that will also have an impact on then the possibilities for uh, Slovakian companies to, to uh, cooperate with the Norwegian uh, companies. Uh, and I will tell you a little bit about Innovation Norway and our uh, activities. I'll try to keep to that uh, time schedule. I have quite a, a large number of uh, slides, but I will then kind of rush through them and maybe you will uh, even uh, distribute them to the participants uh, after so they can uh, have a more closer, uh, closer look. Um, the challenges and, and opportunities. Uh, well, first of all, we of course know that we are in time of, of uh, big uh, changes. That is a great, uh, social challenges that uh, brings about uh, new demands from uh, both from from policy makers and also uh, from from the market uh, so that is a important starting point for all everything uh, we do um, and as we all know that the discussions on sustainability is an important uh, one these uh, days so that uh, kind of also involves uh, increased uh, risks but also uh, opportunities that I will uh, address a little bit. So, and we are also in uh, times of uh, uh, rapid uh, development of, of new uh, technologies. Uh, we all know that uh, digitalization is uh, a key word uh, as regards uh, the, the new technologies, that we are changing uh, the way we are working uh, because of uh, that. So, of course, in Norway, we will have to do that uh, as well, even though I think that uh, we are quite advanced in Norway as regards uh, technology and, and, and digitalization, but still. Um, and one important challenge for Norway is that we need more growth companies to, that are able to scale uh, internationally. Uh, I will come back to a little bit about uh, the export uh, from Norway, but uh, you probably already know that we have been rather dependent on, uh, on oil and gas and, and, uh, and uh, aquaculture. Yes, we will still be big in oil and gas and aquaculture, but we'll also uh, try to have some more, more diversity as regards the exports uh, from Norway. And that will also, again, influence them, the, the cooperation with, with other, uh, yeah. And then we have uh, kind of a regional reform in, in Norway. And that means that also then the the counties, uh, the regions will be more important uh, also in the business uh, development, uh, even uh, when we talk about the international uh, cooperation. And um, unfortunately, I, I could not understand everything that uh, Alexandra said, but, uh, but uh, she touched upon our relationship with the European Union. Uh, it's very important, although uh, as Alexandra said, we are not a member of the European Union. We have the uh, EEA agreement and we are even uh, a part of, uh, of Schengen. 
And that is, of course, a, a very important facilitator for the cooperation uh, also between uh, Norway and uh, Slovakia, because uh, Slovakian companies can expect that they will meet in the same, at least partly the same regulatory framework in Norway as they will meet in uh, any EU member uh, state. Uh, and you will have the same uh, possibilities uh, to then uh, uh, send people across border because of the, the Schengen uh, agreement. You will meet the same requirements. So that is uh, important. And Norway is even a part of the big uh, EU programs, such as uh, Horizon uh, Europe. So that could also be then a platform for uh, uh, important uh, cooperation between Slovakian and Norwegian uh, companies and, and other entities, for instance, research uh, institutes because it will be possible to establish uh, consortia related to applications uh, addressing the EU programs. Very important, and we have a lot of activities on that in Innovation uh, Norway. Uh, but of course, I touched upon uh, sustainability. The, the world um, are asking for new sustainable uh, solutions for the global uh, challenges. Uh, you can see this uh, picture. The, the situation is not uh, good uh, everywhere. And as I already said, Norway needs a more diversified uh, export. So that is a platform or a starting point also for the strategy of, of uh, Innovation Norway. And sustainability is a big part of it. Uh, uh, you probably all know about and, uh, the sustainability goals and the Paris Agreement from 2015. That was kind of a, a turning point. So it's a lot of focus now on the, the solutions provided by companies that they will have to address the, the sustainability uh, goals. But you also have the development at uh, European level. Um, and since uh, both Slovakia and Norway uh, are then closely linked to the European uh, Union and the strategies of the European Union, uh, it will have impact also on the cooperation uh, between us. Uh, that could be the taxonomy uh, discussion on what kind of investments that would be uh, acceptable and uh, considered as uh, green. We have had some discussions about that, that in Norway because sometimes we will then wonder whether, wonder why one type of investment would be qualified and not another one. For instance, one example is that uh, and the uh, investment in offshore uh, wind uh, to electrify the oil and gas uh, installations would not be considered a green investment because it still would be oil and gas. That, so that, that is some kind of, some, just an example of challenges for, for Norway. But it will mean a lot of investment in environmentally friendly uh, technologies. So that is a key area for, for cooperation. And it's a, also then a drive to support uh, industry to uh, be better at, uh, at innovation. And then you have uh, areas uh, also mentioned by, by you when we got the information about the companies participating, about the transport, uh, the carbonization of the, the energy sector, and also the circular economy and the action uh, plan there. So that would be a, a platform uh, for cooperation uh, between our two uh, countries. So if you look at the, the sustainability, of course you all, or, or at least most of you know the triple helix uh, thinking that it uh, need to be both uh, sustainable from an economic, environmental and social uh, point of, uh, of uh, view. Uh, I remember back in the, the 90s when we had the first wave of sustainability discussion, it was a lot of focus on, on the environmental uh, part of it, less on the economic part and also at least not much uh, focus on then the contribution of businesses. But this has changed a lot because if you look at the sustainability discussion now, the, the, the companies in the private sector is kind of in the, in the driver's seat because the, we all realize that uh, without the help of the, the, the businesses and the companies and the uh, ability to innovate and find new solutions, we will never achieve then the goals uh, set uh, for, for sustainability. And then if you look briefly on the drivers for the sustainable society, of course, new technology, te technology development is the important uh, part of it. 
but also also uh, development of new business models. I think that uh, during the last uh, five, 10 years, uh, there's been a lot of focus on different business models. For instance, that we, we don't need to own things. Maybe it's better to provide things as a service. Uh, and that is a more efficient from a resource uh, point of view. And then th that means that uh, we will have development of a lot of interesting new uh, business models. And then we have the, the, the social uh, innovation, and that is to incorporate, of course, uh, more than the, all the three pillars of the triple uh, helix uh, part. And then we have the effective use of uh, resources. So in, in combined, that is kind of uh, what we will find, for instance, under the EU uh, Green Deal uh, thing. But I said that in Norway, we need uh, more diversified export. So we have actually now worked on the export uh, strategy. Uh, that is a strategy that will be, we will work in a more strategic way with the companies and we will be closer to companies and we will try to identify them this, strong areas uh, for Norway. And that would of course also be then the areas where we are looking for cooperation with uh, international uh, partners, such as uh, Slovakian uh, companies. I will just briefly show you why, because the, if you look at the export growth the last five years, uh, the situation for Norway is not uh, that good. The export is uh, kind of decreasing. Uh, several factors uh, are responsible for that. For instance, that uh, the oil and gas prices, of course, they are uh, lower than the, what they used to be. Uh, but, but also then the, the more weak Norwegian uh, currency means that the, at least in Euro, then the export is uh, decreasing. So it's a lot of focus now to increase the inland uh, export because we can't be too dependent on the oil and gas because if you compare to Sweden, you can see that Norway, we have a not a very diversified export uh, industry. If you compare to Sweden, of course, it's, it's good that we have the, the oil and uh, oil and gas, and, and also then the, the aquaculture and the, and, the, and the fisheries. But we need to broaden the scope for uh, Norwegian export and also then the international cooperation of, of Norwegian companies. So we have identified uh, kind of six areas that will be the main areas for opportunities for uh, Norwegian uh, businesses. Clean energy, of course, that's a that's, uh, big uh, thing. And you can even see that the, the big companies that are, have been uh, involved in the oil and gas, they are kind of, if not making the transfer, but they are also putting a lot of now focus on clean energy. Uh, Equinor is, of course, uh, uh, the most important example of that. They are doing a lot uh, now investing in renewable energy, offshore wind and, and, and other types of renewable energy. So that is an important development. They will like to then diversify then the portfolio of the company. And we will see many companies in Norway that will do that because they see that even though the oil and gas will be important for many years uh, still, it will, it will come a time that we will need to have a, a shift. Uh, Bioeconomy is another important uh, uh, area for Norway. We have strong Norwegian uh, companies uh, with, that, with that. We have even had uh, companies that has been involved in projects in Slovakia on bioeconomy, uh, also financed by the EEA Norway grants. Uh, health and welfare. Yes, the, the people of Norway are getting older, like uh, the people of most countries in, in, in Europe. So to then that, of course, give opportunities uh, for companies dealing within uh, health and, and welfare. Ocean space. Yes, ocean space has always been important for Norway. We have the, the fisheries, but we have also now then more uh, offshore uh, energy uh, important and, and other also opportunities related to the ocean. Uh, smart cities is also identified as an important area. Uh, that uh, would also be a part, of course, of the digitalization and, and so on, and, and, and have a kind of holistic strategy for how we will build uh, smart, resource efficient, uh, less polluting uh, states. Uh, and then we have the creative industries and, and tourism. Uh, 
still uh, uh, important, even though not as close as big as the energy field and, and the ocean uh, space. But the, this is then the three areas uh, identified by Innovation Norway as very important for the for the for the future. Uh, a little bit about Innovation Norway. Um, we are a, a, a government agency owned uh, by the Ministry of Trade and Fisheries with 51% and the, the remaining 49% uh, are owned by the regions. Uh, and, and our purpose is then to stimulate to socio-economical profitable business development uh, in all uh, parts of uh, Norway. That is the purpose of, uh, of uh, Innovation uh, Norway. We have kind of, we have three main uh, uh, services. Uh, we are a bank. So we uh, offer uh, capital, uh, both loans, uh, guarantees, uh, and, and uh, grants. Uh, we offer uh, expertise, both uh, in Norway, but also uh, for companies that uh, are then in the process of internationalization and, and export. Uh, we have networks. Uh, we are the owner of a big uh, cluster program in, in Norway, together with the Research uh, Council. So that this is the three main areas where we offer uh, our uh, services. So if you look at the strategic uh, priorities of Innovation Norway for uh, the period of 2020 to 2025, um, we will be the sparring partner for, for businesses uh, across the, the country. Um, we have a lot of focus on sustainable growth and export. Um, we have focus on that the, the businesses should contribute to solve the global social challenges. That would be the, the sustainability uh, goals. So, and we will also work uh, to our uh, our partners. That uh, sub goals uh, are that we more successful entrepreneurs. We work on startups and entrepreneurs, uh, but uh, also as already mentioned, with the companies with growth uh, potential, both in Norway and also then. Uh, companies that are working with international uh, partners and then more innovative business uh, clusters. Uh, we have a lot of uh, masters, uh, the, the ministries, uh, I mentioned already the owner, the Ministry of Trade and, uh, and Fisheries, but we also have assignments from other ministries and then from the, the, the regions and, and, uh, and uh, authorities at the regional uh, level. Just to to give you an indication of the size of, of uh, what we, uh, we are doing. Um, in 2019, we made allocations of uh, uh, around 6.7 billion Norwegian kroner. That would be roughly 700 uh, million uh, euros. Uh, and you can see then the division between loan and guarantees, grants, and then uh, the, the value of our advisory and profiling services. So it's on more uh, loan and guarantees, a little bit less grants, and of course, less uh, advice and, and, and profiling. Uh, the most important sectors, uh, marine, agriculture, energy and environment, maritime, tourism and health. Then, then you will see them the sectors that I already mentioned that the, the main uh, uh, sectors of, of opportunity. They are of course reflected then in the funds allocated uh, from Innovation Norway to, to the sectors. If you look at the effect, uh, you can see that the, the companies that work with Innovation Norway, they usually have uh, higher sale revenues and more value creation, more productivity, and also a more increased number of employees. So you can see that uh, we get some effect out of the Innovation Norway uh, efforts. And of course, one important point is to trigger uh, private uh, investment. So from the 7 billion, uh, uh, Norwegian kroner uh, that uh, allocated from Innovation Norway as grants and loans guarantees uh, that uh, in 2019 triggered more than 10 billion in uh, private uh, investments. So the total uh, part of it was then uh, 17, 18 uh, billion uh, Norwegian kroner in investments triggered from the activities of Innovation uh, Norway. But of course, we are in a, diff a special situation now with the corona. So we've got a lot of uh, additional funding. So the allocations uh, were actually doubled uh, in, uh, in 2020. This will, of course, uh, hopefully soon go back to the, to the normal. But uh, we have then 
uh, uh, total amount of loan and guarantees from Innovation Norway in 2020 of uh, 14 billion knock. That would be 1.4, 1.5 uh, uh, billion uh, euros. Uh, we have offices uh, all over uh, Norway. So because we are kind of a regional uh, development uh, agency. So we have offices from Vatso in north to Grimstad in, in, in south. Uh, you will hear from Bergen uh, later uh, today. And of course, we have a, a strong office in, in Bergen. Uh, and uh, Alexandra mentioned also then the strong points of some of our regions. Of course, we have in Stavanger the oil capital and we have the techno technology, uh, technology capital in, in, in Trondheim. Uh, so that is an uh, important part of it. But we are in also a kind of uh, uh, trade council. So we have offices uh, all over the world, concentrated uh, mostly then in Europe, uh, Asia and in, in, the, in the US. Uh, unfortunately, not, uh, we have no, no office in, uh, in Bratislava, but uh, we are working with Slovakia. Uh, not at least uh, then under the EEA in Norway grants that I will come to very soon. So EEA in Norway grants, uh, it's a great platform for cooperation uh, between uh, Slovakia and, uh, and uh, Norway. Uh, probably at least some of you have heard about EEA in Norway grants. That is kind of the same type of contribution that the EU member state will make through the structural uh, funds. Uh, and the purpose is to contribute to reducing economic and social disparities in the European economic area. Uh, hence the comparison with uh, the structural funds. But very important is that it's also to strengthen the relations between uh, Norway and the beneficiary states. And then in case of Slovakia, of course, to strengthen the relations between Norway and uh, Slovakia. Uh, in the program period we are in now, 2014 to 21, with the implementation of projects up to 224, it's 2.8 billion uh, euros to programs in 15 countries. And we have a, a business and development innovation SME program in Slovakia. Uh, the budget is uh, 20 million uh, euros. Uh, and as already mentioned by Alexandra, the, the operator is the research uh, uh, agency uh, in Slovakia. Uh, and they will have open call uh, within the areas green industry innovation, welfare technology, and ICT. Uh, and in addition, some small grant schemes on education, scholarships, and, uh, and so on. And it's a priority on bilateral uh, cooperation. Um, Innovation Norway, uh, to get, together with DQ in Bergen and IBA in Liechtenstein, we are uh, so-called program partners. So we are then assisting the research agency in Slovakia in both uh, the development of the other program, uh, which has been completed, and we'll do that same during the implementation of the program. Uh, if you look at the innovation part, um, the overall objective is to realize then the business opportunities uh, and also greening the European economy. So we have a kind of a slogan that the project should be good for business and good for the environment. So it fits very well into for instance, the discussions on uh, on the Green Deal uh, going on uh, within the European uh, Union. So we can say that the EA and Norway grants, they are already contributing to the Green Deal. So the business program in, uh, in Slovakia, who can apply for funding? Well, that will be uh, uh, companies, private sector companies in Slovakia, that would be SMEs and large companies with less than 25% public uh, ownership. So we are not addressing uh, state-owned companies, we are addressing the, the private sector and primarily the SMEs. And then, as I mentioned, we have some schemes on education, scholarships and, and so on. And of course, the higher educational institutions and so on will be, uh, be uh, uh, eligible for, for funding. But it will only then be applicants that uh, are registered according to national regulations in, in Slovakia. You, uh, SME will need to be then registered and established in Slovakia to get uh, the funding. And of course, they will have to document the ability to implement a project technologically, financially, and uh, human uh, resources. But as I said, uh, the, bilateral uh, the bilateral aspect is very important. So the project um, couldn't have 
partners registered in the donor states. And that would be Iceland, Liechtenstein, and, and Norway. In some calls for proposals, it will only be in Norway because of uh, formalities, because the, the programs are formally speaking, legally speaking, funded from different schemes, Norway grants and EA uh, grants. So it depends on the funding, whether it's only partners from Norway or it's partners from Norway, Iceland and, and Liechtenstein. And the partners can be even in the business program, not only companies, it could also be research institutes, universities, uh, NGOs, uh, public institutions. So we have, for instance, in other programs seen many projects with Norwegian research institutes, such as Sintef, that was already mentioned by Alexandra. Uh, uh, they have been involved in a number of projects and then that it is often a good match then between a, a uh, SME in the beneficiary state and Sintef as the Norwegian uh, partner. So, how to find a partner? Of course, uh, we are in difficult uh, times uh, because we have usually in the programs used uh, physical uh, matchmakings. Uh, they are, of course, now uh, suspended. Uh, hopefully, we will come back to, to physical uh, matchmakings uh, in not too distant uh, future. Uh, hopefully even uh, within the period of, of call for proposals in, in Slovakia. Uh, I forgot to mention that the as call for proposals in Slovakia will hopefully now be published uh, before the summer uh, and then with a deadline for applications uh, sometimes uh, during uh, the autumn. So uh, look out uh, for that. Um, and in that, of course, we hope to, to see a lot of, uh, of uh, Norwegian partners. We are doing, doing this uh, the alternative uh, way. We have uh, tried to have the online webinars and uh, matchmakings. So the search for partners uh, continues. Um, it was already mentioned the Oslo Innovation Week. Uh, we are planning for a big matchmaking in connection with Oslo Innovation Week. It will take place uh, online and the topic will uh, most likely be circular economy. And that will fit very well into the call for proposal that will be published in, uh, in Slovakia. So we hope to mobilize a lot of uh, potential uh, Slovakian applicants to meet with potential uh, Norwegian partners during that uh, matchmaking. And I'm sure that we can work to, together with the with uh, both the embassy and the others of you uh, in then uh, uh, promoting this uh, matchmaking uh, activity. But it's all also possible to find uh, at the homepage of Innovation um, in Norway. Uh, 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 we have a kind of a, a database or at least a list of uh, companies that have registered interest. And it's also possible for Slovakian companies to register a brief profile of what kind of cooperation uh, they are looking for uh, under the EEA Norway grants. And then we have the Explorer. That is the, the official uh, marketplace for green uh, technology exports uh, of Norway. Uh, but it's also possible to use the Explorer for uh, international companies, uh, also companies in, in Slovakia. Uh, it mostly promotes Norwegian companies uh, uh, with them green solutions and connect them with international uh, buyers and, and partners. But, but as I said, it's also possible for uh, foreign companies to, uh, to register and be involved in, in, uh, in the, the Explorer. Uh, and I just before the meeting, because it, the, for instance, the food industry was indicated as one important one for, uh, for Slovakia. I did a, a, a search on, on food at the Explorer and I got more than 100 hits. So it's the more than 100 Norwegian companies that uh, within the food sector that has registered for, uh, for Explorer. And of course, you know that some big players in the food industries from Norway, they are already involved in Slovakia, for instance, Orkla Foods. So, uh, so it's also an area of uh, possible uh, cooperation. Um, the good thing about uh, Explorer is that uh, the solutions uh, that are presented um, uh, at Explorer, they are vetted. Uh, when launching this, uh, this uh, showroom uh, more than two years ago, the Norwegian prime minister, uh, she labeled it uh, the Tinder for businesses. Uh, but then uh, fortunately the, the profiles are better vetted, uh, vetted I think uh, on this uh, one or than on the regular uh, Tinder. So you could find 
Well, the, I think the, the, the numbers are already uh, outdated because it's changing so uh, fast. So you have no more than 400 uh, green and sustainable solutions from Norway uh, represented at, uh, at uh, the Explorer. And it's then possible to, to make a search and then if you find a company, you can make a simple registration and then you will get the contact uh, details. And the good thing um, is, of course, that the, the, the Norwegian companies that uh, are present at the Explorer, they are willing, able and ready to take part in international uh, cooperation. And as you can see from the information there, we have now also more than 700 international companies registered that are uh, interested in connecting with them, the, the Norwegian companies um, at the Explorer. So this is a really strong tool for uh, for uh, partner search uh, in in Norway. Uh, one other uh, uh, tool for partner search that I will I will just mention that uh, that is that uh, Innovation Norway is the Norwegian uh, part of the Enterprise Europe network. Uh, Enterprise Europe Network is the biggest uh, network for uh, advising companies in uh, actually in the world, but it's an EU uh, established uh, network. And it's always possible for a company to go to the their local uh, Enterprise Europe Network uh, office and get the help to to prepare a profile, and then then the the E Enterprise Europe Network office will then connect with the Enterprise Europe Network in Norway and try then to sort out how to find a partner. Uh, I don't have the full overview of the network in Slovakia, but at least I know that uh, the Slovak business agency, SBA, they, they are part of the Enterprise uh, Europe uh, network. So it's different uh, ways to, to find uh, partners, but it's of course always possible to try take direct contact also with uh, with Innovation uh, Norway, and we will try to, to help you. But but uh, the tools we are now presented, they are, they are rather uh, interesting and important. So I think I've used my time, so I will say thank you uh, very much, and I will be ready to answer any questions uh, later during the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you, Magna. Thank you very much for showing us where actually Norway is heading to and what are the possibilities arising also for Slovak-Norwegian partnerships in future. Now, I would like to also use the space and pass the word to Mrs. Astri, Astri Pato, who is External Affairs Director of the Oslo Chamber of Commerce. So if I may ask you to share your presentation with some possibilities for cooperation and your introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you can now see my screen. Yes, we do. Thank you. Yeah, you can. OK, good. Thank you for uh, inviting me to hold this uh, introduction to business in Norway and uh, to introduce uh, our chamber, also Chamber of Commerce. So my name is Astri Plato and uh, I have worked for the Oslo Chamber for many years. One of my uh, tasks uh, through many years have been to assist actually primarily foreign companies into the Norwegian market. So uh, I will angle uh, this presentation uh, from uh, foreign companies, um, how they can uh, go about to, uh, to find partners in Norway and what they need to consider before they go ahead. So uh, just a, a brief glimpse uh, of some of uh, Norway's industries and uh, culture characteristics. Um, to do business uh, in uh, a country, you need to know, of course, a little bit about both the culture and country facts in order to understand how they influence the way of doing business in that specific country. And uh, we see that uh, many businesses miss out on that and uh, it can actually cost them a lot. Some facts about Norway, a lot have been said here. Um, I don't understand Slovak language, but uh, I, from what I see and hear also from uh, 
among now that uh, many things uh, have already been touched upon. But anyway, <clears throat> Norway is a long stretched country with a long coast. And um, as you see, we have uh, divided the country into five geographical regions uh, historically because of how the land is uh, um, scaped uh, with uh, mountains um, and uh, forests. And we have actually very little uh, population out of which uh, around 25% is concentrated around the southeastern part of the country. So this will of course uh, affect uh, how you uh, consider when you um, uh, plan to do business. Also the fact that the, um, the various industries are located in various parts of the country. As <clears throat> has already been covered here, we have uh, since the end of the 60s been uh, quite dependent on the oil and gas that has made out uh, um, almost half of our export. And fishery is another um, important uh, um, business, but uh, it makes out very little, very, li very little percentage compared to oil and gas. But we have our other profitable, um, profitable uh, industries, uh, hydropower, fishing and uh, aquaculture, metallurgic industries, and also newer business sectors like biotech, health tech, and uh, what we will touch more upon when it comes to the Oslo area. Our traditional trading partner has been the EU with a focus on Germany and UK and Sweden, and more recently also the US and China have become big business partners for Norway. So the city of Oslo in itself um, is quite compact, around 640,000 inhabitants, but the greater Oslo area has a population of 2.5 million. The Oslo Chamber of Commerce is uh, focused on the Oslo area where all our, almost all our members uh, are located, but we are also oriented uh, um, internationally. So um, it's important for us to be able to assist foreign companies, uh, whichever part of Norway they are looking to do business. Oslo is um, knowledge driven, has a lot of knowledge driven uh, businesses, uh, uh, new technologies uh, and startups. And uh, accordingly, the service sectors uh, are dominant in this area. There are around 50 clusters of uh, network organizations. Most of them operate in the field of energy and environmental technology, bioeconomy, life science, and ICT. So these uh, would be the, the primary fields that provide opportunities for foreign companies looking to invest or find a business partner in the Oslo area. So to the more practical uh, um, issues in uh, doing business here, you have to be aware of a few facts. This, Norway is a small market, uh, which I have to uh, emphasize for most countries that we uh, are in contact with, but uh, I see that uh, Slovakia has the same population uh, as Norway, so you will understand that very well. <clears throat> and also important to be aware that uh, even if you, uh, many companies uh, we are in contact with, they, they say that they already know Scandinavia, but knowing uh, how to do business and how the structure for their products uh, is in uh, Denmark or Sweden does not necessarily mean that uh, you, you do not need to uh, do a good uh, homework before you uh, launch in Norway. We have, of course, a high purchase power, which is uh, good, but uh, may also be less price conscious. And we find when we uh, assist foreign companies into the market that they are more laid back, 
it's not necessarily so important that uh, the price is uh, lower. Quality is, of course, important, but sometimes um, the issue can be um, having a cooperation partner close to their own business. And uh, the further away the, uh, the company we present, the uh, more of a difficulty they, they see. Um, okay, I mentioned the geographical distribution and uh, important to be aware of uh, the various areas in Norway for the different type of businesses. Um, like, you know, oil and gas on the West Coast, uh, <clears throat> subcontractors on the South Coast, and you have fisheries further North, West and up in the North, and also furniture industry on the West Coast. Um, and, but then of course you have the head offices in the uh, Oslo area, and that's where you have the main population. So for you to introduce a, long, um, a product or a service on the Norwegian market, it may be a good idea to start in the southwestern part, finding um, a business partner there that can cover the rest of the, the country. <laughs> I see here that uh, I have three, three very negative words here, cannibalism, die and kill. It doesn't mean that uh, it's dangerous to enter the Norwegian market, but uh, some of these, uh, some of the facts uh, um, are that uh, we have a very high chain domination, and especially when it comes to food and groceries and also other consumer products, um, uh, we have had a lot of uh, mergers. And uh, for food, it's uh, only three big operators. And if you are not able to enter, uh, in one of those uh, chains, you um, may have a difficulty on the on the market. And uh, the merging is also due to the fact that uh, the increase in internet shopping is very considerable in Norway, as in most other industrialized countries. But it's becoming a problem uh, a problem that uh, shops. And the shopping centers, the shop uh, um, have to close. So. Okay, these are a few facts that uh, many of the companies that we uh, are in contact with uh, um, ask about. Uh, and uh, I will not go into more detail here since we have very short time. Um, about wages and taxes, uh, this you can read for yourself if you. So I understand the, the presentation will be distributed. So things to consider um, on a general basis, um, which part of Norway that you uh, um, are interested in and um, how to go about it, whether through an agent, distributor, type of a sale channel, Price structure is important. Is there a very high competition? Other similar products or services? And is it worthwhile, uh, depending on how big the market is? If it's a niche product, it may be difficult. Um, so generally, um, the more you um, know, the more control you have. And, um, important to be proactive. So these are some of the services that we assist with to enter the Norwegian market. Uh, I see we have all the way already uh, from Alexandra had a list of useful organizations. So um, here you can just uh, see what can be useful uh, depending on which branch you are in. And you can also contact us and we will um, tailor make uh, the, uh, the approach to the Norwegian market for your product or service. So then uh, at the end, uh, a few words about what we can actually do for you. Um, I will not start by giving a presentation of our chamber because you know, chambers of commerce, we have more or less the same services but uh, I think it's uh, it's actually quite unusual that a chamber 
uh, has their own services uh, assisting foreign companies more so than assisting our own uh, members going abroad. Then we have Innovation Norway, of course, which does an excellent job there. But um, we, what we can do is to um, assist uh, with uh, making a market report based on your concrete uh, products. We can uh, then, if you find based on this, that there is a market, we can uh, do the matchmaking process at a list of 20, 25 uh, prospects and then go through it with you. And then those you find of interest, we will uh, approach by telephone, which is in, in some ways you can say that the old system of uh, the old way of finding a business partner. But we see that uh, it is extremely difficult sometimes for a foreign company to um, present themselves on the Norwegian market without having an intermediate, be it a chamber of commerce, be it the embassy, um, or maybe a council for the country. Somebody that has a foothold in, uh, in Norway and uh, can also um, confirm the seriosity of the uh, um, of the of the re business request. So we have very good uh, experience with uh, with this. Uh, both uh, the threshold is now lower when we have a, a electronic uh, um, platforms, and uh, even uh, setting up physical meetings uh, is also a very easy thing to do when. Uh, when you are contacted by a, a Norwegian Chamber of Commerce. So that's that was the promotion. We also uh, receive business delegations uh, and uh, hold country seminars uh, in cooperation with uh, foreign chambers of commerce or with embassies. And we answered thousands and thousands of questions uh, over the years from uh, all over the world. Send us an email and uh, we are small, but we do our best to at least uh, give you a hint to where you can uh, proceed finding a business partner. So uh, I think that sums up briefly what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Astri. I really appreciate that you mentioned some things we have to be aware of before we actually approach the Norwegian market and. Uh, and how to find the ways how to get in the market. And now I would like to use also this opportunity to pass the word to Mr. Johannes Magnus, who is head of international relations of the Bergen Chamber of Commerce. So please take the word. Thank you. Thank you, Sario. Thank you. Uh, I see we don't have uh, very much more time, so I'll put my timer on. So I'll be sure to not use the rest of the, of the day for you because um, I don't know if you have time for questions in the end, but I'll try to be short. Uh, I'll put on my presentation for you. Let's see. Can you see it, Sario? Yes, it's, it's good. Thank you. So, can I full screen? So yeah, thank you for getting the opportunity to uh, present for you. Um, it's nice to, uh, even if we can't meet in uh, physical, it's uh, even nicer that we can meet so many of you digitally uh, doing these kinds of presentation in these times. Uh, I'll give you um, a glance of the industries in Bergen and maybe some of potential business opportunities for you. Um, and uh, let me just start by showing you a picture of Bergen because I, I guess maybe a lot of you don't know where we're located, but of course we are on the west coast uh, and this is the downtown of the city and uh, in the Bern, Bergen municipality it's uh, 290,000 inhabitants, makes us the second largest city in, uh, in Norway. And uh, today it's sunny outside. This picture is not from today, but uh, looking out the window, it's blue sky. And uh, I've been to Slovakia for skiing in Jasna, 
Uh, and I, <clears throat> I love the mountain areas in Slovakia and see lots of the similarities between uh, our regions. Uh, but we, of course, have the shoreline that you don't. But uh, in other cases, areas we are quite like, I, I think. Uh, so Bergen Chamber of Commerce, we are a private non-governmental uh, chamber and uh, our aim is to promote and inspire the, the business sector and our members. So we have uh, over 3,000 uh, 3, uh, members and 2,000 uh, individual um, uh, businesses are member of our chamber. Um, so our main goal is probably to build relations between uh, between the business sector, government, and research and education. And uh, doing that is because we want to secure a predictable framework for the private sector. So uh, we don't provide the same B two B B two B services and connecting uh, foreign companies like Oslo Chamber does. Uh, but uh, and Innovation Norway also provides some of those services. But uh, we are uh, a very large, we are the largest and greatest network uh, arena in our region. Uh, so we are, have usually in, in post corona times, we, we facilitate and arrange 140 seminars and conferences physically and now uh, all of those conferences and uh, seminars are digitally but um, it's a, it's a great arena for uh, networking with uh, both uh, uh, businesses but also uh, politicians and governmental uh, employees and uh, other organizations that are interested to, to work together with um, we are also an international chamber network as well, together with Oslo Chamber. So we have uh, several um, connections with the international chamber network in Europe and, uh, and globally. So um, I have highlighted uh, eight key industries in, in Bergen. And, uh, and um, the industries in, in uh, the West Coast is uh, dominated by within the natural resources uh, industries. And uh, it's also very technology driven industries as well. But as, as you heard today, uh, oil and gas and the energy sector is by far the largest in Norway. And on the West Coast, it, all the operations are, are made. So, but also we are, are very large on hydropower, on offshore wind, hydrogen fuel, um, and also uh, we are now, Norway is building the world's largest and most sophisticated carbon uh, capture and storage uh, facility outside uh, Bergen. Uh, so it's to, to storage carbon from, from industries. And it's very interested, interesting field um, for the future. Uh, but as I said, you don't have the uh, coastline that we do. Um, but within the ocean industries, there's a lot of uh, IT and technology development that uh, uh, is uh, transformed for other industries. So it's a very, a lot part of these uh, sectors are very booming. And of course, the seafood area uh, and within salmon production, uh, four of the five largest uh, salmon companies have their headquarters in Bergen. That industry is very large. Uh, and also the 60% of all, all Norwegian's total research and development is also located in Bergen. So we see Bergen is uh, categorized as one of the most complete seafood clusters in the world. Shipping, also a very large part of our industry. We have, uh, Norway has the fifth largest ship fleet in the world. And uh, most of the uh, shipping companies located in, in, in Bergen. But what, what's very exciting for the industry uh, 
industry development and transmission is within the maritime clean tech uh, environment that is in uh, in the Bergen region. And uh, we now build the, are building the, I mean, four years ago, five years ago, we companies here built the first electric uh, uh, car ferry in the world. And now uh, next year, there will be 80 uh, electric car ferries in operating in Norway. And, uh, and now we are also building the first hydrogen uh, fuel driven uh, ferry that is uh, going to be operated on the West Coast. And uh, that's the next step in the maritime clean tech yeah, uh, field. And uh, of course, when we know uh, the, uh, the complete maritime uh, market around the world is going to be uh, uh, fossil free uh, in within 2050, it's a huge, uh, huge market to, to cover. And uh, uh, that is very nice and interesting to see that uh, companies in, in, the Ber in Bergen and the West Coast are in the forefront of this development. Uh, <clears throat> and, um, but other technologies such as um, Media technology is uh, a very booming industry here in Bergen. We have a cluster here working with the IT sector together with the energy sector on different media technologies. Um, and uh, they are serving companies all around the world from, from their headquarters here in, here in Bergen. In finance technology, also a very booming and uh, new industry that is uh, is uh, uh, mainly focused in, in Bergen, has the largest environment for new startups uh, within finance technology. And uh, they are also looking for both media technology and finance technology is very interesting in looking on foreign uh, business uh, corporations and uh, and. Uh, being so uh, globally, uh, having a global market and not being, uh, uh, not having to be, uh, to be sitting on a, on a desk in, in Bergen. They, they, have, they are looking for partnerships all around the world. And tourism uh, is, is uh, before the corona, corona pandemic, it was very big uh, tourism, but still it's, it's a very big uh, industry in the coming years. These are the clusters in, uh, in the Bergen region. And these are what Innovation Norway is uh, uh, being part of financing. These uh, innovation clusters uh, are programmed for uh, industries within uh, specific sectors. And we have seafood, as I said, ocean technology, uh, tourism, maritime clean tech, and finance innovation. The west coast of Norway and Bergen in particular are the, the most export intensive regions in, in, the, in Norway. Um, and that is because of energy shipping and seafood being the strongest industries. Uh, in Norway and on the stock exchange. So, oh, now I see the time is already up. But um, so 60% of all the value creation within the ocean industries in Norway stems from the West Coast. And um, that, that gives you a little bit overview of how we are set up in this area. Um, this is two conferences upcoming here in Bergen that is internationally. So if you are interested in connecting with business opportunity within the ocean uh, sector, it's uh, between 14 and 15 September, a large conference here with high delegates, both from officials and from uh, industries, both in Norway and, and foreign places. And North Atlantic it's seafood in uh, just a couple of days is in Bergen as well. And if you wish to uh, to do businesses in Norway, uh, you I suggest you can always contact me in the Bergen Chamber of Commerce to get advice. But if not, uh, I suggest that you contact uh, Tuna Hotvad uh, 
in that's the Invest in Bergen, and it's an official organization for investments in, in the Greater Bergen area. So they will assist you to find a business opportunity here, and um, the services they provide is also free of charge. So it's a good opportunity for you to check out that. So sorry, thank you for doing that presentation for you. Thank you, Anna. It was quite nice to get to know uh, Bergen much better and from other aspects that maybe be here in Slovakia are used to understand Bergen. And uh, as far as we are a little bit running out of time, we do have just a few more minutes left for the Q&A. Now, the question that was given to us before the registration, when it was already time and time and time, we can ask some questions if we ask them, we can ask them in the B2B consultation. I would like to ask the first question, what is the most important way to find a business partner in Norsku? So for this matter, I would like to also ask Mrs. Astri if you could reflect possibly upon the first question. So, so according to your opinion, what are the best ways for finding a sizable business partner in Norway? All right. Um, as I mentioned in my presentation, I think it's the um, I'm not sure it's the easiest, but it's uh, the the uh, the way that works the best is to go through direct contacts in Norway. If you can find a bilateral chamber, a chamber of commerce like the two presented here, or an embassy or uh, a consul, um, that uh, will uh, give uh, the um, the company more credibility because credibility is often a problem. There, uh, I'm sure that uh, there are a lot of corporations that uh, would be beneficial for both parties if you uh, um, were able to present them in the right uh, way. And also the, the foreign company, of course, have to be aware of, uh, of um, doing their homework and be proactive. Uh, uh, find out as much as possible, then uh, when getting in contact with the Norwegian uh, counterparty, they will also be able to uh, um, understand each other much better. And they do not run the risk of uh, um, being cheated in any way. So that's uh, in addition to all that I have said in the presentation, that's, that is what I I can offer uh, or can suggest. Uh, of course, you have a lot of websites. Uh, was mentioned here the uh, Enterprise Europe Network, mm -hmm. which I'm sure is a very good way, um, and also other uh, online networks. But then it's uh, the the challenge of really getting through. Yeah, thank you very much. And maybe also, Magnar, would you like to add something on this point? I think I just would like to, to echo what was uh, was said because it, it's important to to create some credibility. It's not always a good solution just to uh, find a company on the, on the net and then uh, send uh, an an email. It is uh, often better to have some one that could introduce uh, you to the to the Norwegian company that will show them that this is a serious uh, request and, and 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 also then of course I, we mentioned the, the explorer that is a good uh, tool because then then the company will have to make a simple registration and then they will see that this has been true uh, the, the explorer so and also in the enterprise Europe network is uh, is uh, good and, and of course also if we speak about the EA Norway grants, we will have the, the matchmakings and then during the matchmakings and the profiles of companies will be kind of vetted. So then that will be, a, if not a guarantee, it will also be a, be a good indication of that this is a serious business. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. And maybe also if we get to the second questions, I think Mrs. Astri, you also mentioned in your presentation this question to some extent that whether it's better to establish a company or entity in Norway, or is it also good to have the entity based in Slovakia and from there to approach the Norwegian market? How do you see this? 
Yes, well, I think that this depends a lot on the type of business. It's uh, difficult to give uh, one uh, rule for for uh, everybody. So uh, as I mentioned, the companies that we are mostly in, in contact with are those who are looking for a, a distributor agent uh, or some sort of a corporation to introduce their products on the Norwegian markets, not vice versa in any extent. So then I will say uh, it's better to start in the small to, uh, to find uh, an agent or a distributor and see how this develops. And then they can establish a, a, a local office or they can run it as a, as a branch, uh, NUF as we call it, a foreign branch to, uh, to the, the Swacom company, which is a simple way of starting too. Yes, thank you very much. And in case I think Chevrolet might be helpful if someone will decide in future so hopefully we will stay in touch later on and uh, when i see the third question this is focused particularly on blockchain technology so i think magna what are the experiences of norway with uh, with the blockchain do you have something to comment upon yeah i, th I think that if you uh, then um what would be then the innovation Norway approach? I think that is uh, kind of uh, cautious. Uh, we, of course, uh, uh, look into the potential of the blockchain uh, technology and we, we, from time to time, also deal with uh, projects related to blockchain technology. But uh, as of today, we have perhaps seen more talk about potential than, than really than the, the practical good uh, solutions. Uh, we have financed uh, a small number of blockchain technology projects, uh, mainly from our humanitarian programs, uh, then with projects implemented in very, very difficult markets in, in Af Africa and, uh, and, and so on, where then the, they don't have, for instance, then the, the, the infrastructure for financial uh, transactions and, and, uh, and so on. But, but uh, yes, we, we look at the potential, but uh, I think that the approach is still rather cautious. Uh, and we have also had some cases uh, within data centers uh, that uh, with then potential uh, investments uh, for data centers that would like to use a lot of energy to, to for instance, mining for uh, for Bitcoin and, and, and others. And, and we have been very cautious on the, on the, on the approach because uh, we are rather unsure whether this will be sustainable uh, business. Thank you very much. I, I think and I see that Johannes is raising hands. So do you have something to comment on this question? Well, yeah, I, since, uh, since this is a question from you and probably from some of your companies, I guess if, mm -hmm. it, if this is really something that you're interested in, it's, uh, it's uh, very much uh, being, uh, uh, yeah, <clears throat> tested in uh, different areas, especially mm -hmm. inside the finance technology cluster here in Bergen. So several companies there are, are working with it, not, <clears throat> not only on trans transactions, but uh, on other uh, fields as well. So, so um, I will then recommend you to contact uh, the Norwegian cluster on financial finance technology in Bergen. Okay, thank you very much. I put down the notes, so I will direct this information to the company that actually gave us this question. Thank you very much, Anas. And uh, also we can move to a little bit uh, different uh, sector. Hopefully you can see the other set of questions. And the first one is focused on the railway system in Norway. Is, are there any possibilities for further development in this area or is it going to be somehow supported as part of a green project or how do you see it, for example, Magna, if you can? Yeah, of course. There has been some some discussions, but they are rather far from uh, any types of, of decisions because it's been discussed uh, whether it would be possible to have a fast train between Oslo and Bergen and uh, also to prolong then the, the northern part of the railway uh, system. But uh, uh, this is not likely to happen uh, in the near uh, future. But of course, we have then the, the 
always the discussion about how to, for instance, to then to uh, transfer then the, the freight uh, from from lorries to to the the railway. So we have kind of discussions uh, on that. But but I don't, I don't see that in the near future that we will have a prolongation of uh, of uh, the railway network in Norway. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I see. And. Uh... Regarding the next question, which is focused on grocery, uh, well, I think agriculture was part of uh, Norwegian economy even long time before the oil was discovered and started to be traded. And how, how is it now? Is, is the country self-sufficient when it comes to groceries or is there any potential for foreign companies to be active in food processing industry, for example? Or Magnar, maybe if you can, or Astrid. Yeah, Astrid, do you want to say something? Uh, if, if you have, I see these, I'm sorry, but I I, I must have had the old questions because I see these for, for the first time, so. Oh yeah, I see, <laughs> never mind. We will, <laughs> yes, we will touch on these sorry. questions, yeah. of course, after the webinar by email, so no problems with this. And maybe the last question, if you feel that you would like to answer, maybe ask three, is there any association for engineering companies in, in Norway? Uh, yes, there is. And uh, I, I do think that there is a, a potential for uh, subcontracting uh, within the various uh, engineering sectors, uh, uh, such as machinery and equipment, electronics components. Uh, um metallurgic industry i've had some negative uh, um experiences with because there are already you in all in sectors some sectors there are already a lot of uh, good uh, subcontractors competing in norway and they will often have an advantage because they are located closer to the industry so um but there is i would think there definitely is potential also for um, outsourcing mm -hmm. okay so this seems to be the very last question and it also seems that we are we have already managed everything that we are supposed to do in one hour and 45 minutes so I would like to say a big thank you for your time and for your dedication being here with us and providing all of those information via your presentations. So hopefully if you don't mind and if you will agree, we would like to share those presentations with um, today's participants and uh, hopefully we will be able to cooperate also in the future. So thank you very much for your time and stay safe, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. And I will Bye. have a little announcement also in the Slovak language. So if you wish, you can already log out from the meeting. But um, let me say really thank you very much. Uh, pre všetkých slovenských účastníkov by som ešte rád uviedol informáciu, že o jednej začínajú individuálne konzultácie buď s pani ekonomickou diplomatkou Alexandrou Dubas alebo s pánom honorárnym konzulom Torbjernom Halandom, 